maintenance video. I still use coil machines. I love coil machines. The only thing about them is that they do require a little bit of maintenance and upkeep compared to a rotary machine, which is just plug and play. Um, the way these work, you get a lot of uh, carbon buildup on the machine. Uh, you'll get a lot where the contact screw hits the front spring. You'll get a lot of buildup underneath the uh, uh, armature bar at the front coil where they meet. You'll get a lot of buildup there as well. You do get some on the back, but it's not as extreme as the front coil. Uh, so every month I like to strip my machine down, clean uh, all the carbon off, and then I'll uh, put some lubrication on the uh, rear spring as well as where the front and rear spring meet. Uh, that just helps stop any rusting from happening, which once, uh, once it starts rusting, your springs get uh, pretty weak and they wanna, they wanna snap on you, and that's never a fun thing. So uh, you don't need a whole lot to do this, course you need your machine um, you need some sort of cleaning agent to clean off the carbon buildup I don't remember where I found this product or where I heard of this product I know it was from a machine builder this QD electronic cleaner this stuff is amazing it takes all the carbon residue off it takes any sort of oils off and it evaporates really quickly so you don't have to worry about you know trying to get off any residual that you've left on there. Um, if you miss some of it, it'll just evaporate away um, rather quickly. So this stuff is awesome. The only thing I will tell you though is this will strip any sort of, you know, lubrication you have on there, uh, buildup you have on there, or even any sort of oils on there. So if you use this stuff, you're gonna wanna apply some sort of lube back onto the springs in spots that need it like I mentioned earlier already. So we need this uh, lubrication like I've been talking about. You can do a whole bunch of things. I've used this Lucas Extreme Gun Oil. Um, it worked okay. The one thing I noticed on springs like this where it has the the bluing on it, in areas where there's a lot of friction, so say where the rear spring and the front spring meet and get screwed together. As soon as that bluing chips off, this does not do a good job at preventing rust. It, it'll actually still rust. So what I've been doing and what my coworker uh, told me he used to do is he uses Vaseline. So he'll put like the smallest amount of Vaseline where the front and rear spring meet and put the smallest amount of Vaseline underneath the rear spring on the, the spring deck. So I've been trying it. This is the first month using it. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's, oh, uh, you also need some sort of uh, screwdriver or whatever you got to disassemble it. I will tell you, if you have Phillips or flathead bolts here, I would highly recommend replacing them. They just seem to strip out a hell of a lot easier than what um, these hex bolts do. And the hex bolts are nice because you can get a really nice, snug, secure um, fit on them, for lack of a better term, when you're when you're tightening down. And then you don't have to worry about your springs or your screws loosening up as you um, use the machine for however long you do. That's basically all you need right there. Uh, there are a few tools that will make your life a heck of a lot easier. Uh, first being a armature bar alignment tool. This will come in slick when you have your armature bar and your spring set back up. Um, it literally just slides right in here. Uh, give me one sec. All right. So the joys of using plastic tubes is sometimes they're all different sizes. So then this 
gets closed too tightly. So I just got to bump it a little bit. All right. But yeah, this will slide up here. Um, it'll sit right there and it'll keep your uh, armature bar in alignment. This works good for some machines. Other machines where the armature bar sticks out past it, it doesn't work as well. Um, of course, because it doesn't allow it to sit where the, the grommet would go. But I mean, like I said, it's not a need. It just, it, it makes life a little easier if you can get away with it. Uh, the other thing you'll need, or not need, but would be helpful is a spring alignment tool. Uh, the way this works is basically your armature bar will slide in here. Your springs will fit on this other groove and it just lines everything up straight. Um, again, with coils, they can be very picky and particular. So if stuff is not lined up in the um, same exact way that you took it off, it could cause the machine to run slightly different. Uh, they also make this style. So the black one I got from Workhorse Irons, it's for half inch rear springs. This one, I believe I picked up from Kingpin, and it accepts both half inch and I believe it's 5 eighths inch uh, rear springs. So this is kind of nice if you have uh, a shader or, you know, a machine that has a wider back spring. Um, and you'll be able to do both with one kind of tool as compared to this one. But that's really it. So what I like to do... Let me get this stuff out the way. All right, so if you've never done this before, and if you've never, if you're like new to using coil machines and you've never really tinkered with them, tuned them, broke them down, you know, messed with them, what I suggest you do is get your power supply. This will, it, it's nice if you have a power supply that has, um, the readouts don't get obsessed over the numbers. They really don't matter. I just like to use them as like a little benchmarker from when I take the machine apart to when I put it back together as like a check, like, hey, everything's in alignment still from what it used to be. So I'll just plug it in. And I kind of just like to get an idea of how it runs, how if, how it's hitting at at certain voltages. And I mean, you when I first started doing this, I would literally write down all the numbers. So then when I put it back together, I made sure that it was, you know, still running the same. The more you do this, the more you'll get comfortable with the way these run and you won't necessarily have to rely on the numbers. But if you're new to it, it's a good way to to kind of check your check your work basically so i mean we got a good idea of you know kind of the power band of this machine now and how it hits and now we can start taking it apart all right so first thing i will do is put the Alignment tool back in. So with this, I always like to put a little upward pressure on it. So it'll hit, and I just wanna see the A bar raise up just a little bit, and that kinda just puts enough tension on it to keep it in place. I'll tighten that down. We'll go ahead and take take the rear screw out. Uh, biggest thing when you take this off, make sure you remember how all the screws were stacked up. Otherwise, I like to just keep them all in a big pile like that, so then I know. All right, and then you can loosen your armature bar tool And then that'll be that. All right, so this is where the jig comes in handy. You can slide this right in. Actually, it's the wrong side. 
slide it in. Again, unscrew it. Keep all your screws together. All right, so you can kind of see what I was talking about, how there's no rust, but where, let me get it up closer. Hopefully you can see this, but where the bluing was worn off, you could see it starting to rust. You probably see it better on this side. I hope this is coming across. You can see it really easy on the armature bar. So, so that is that. Um, grab our electronics cleaner. Um, you need some sort of towel, whether it's a shop towel, a bounty towel, a microfiber towel. Just be careful if it has a lot of lint, you could leave a speck of lint like say on the tip of your front screw and then your machine might not run when you put it back together. So all I like to do is just hose it down. Hit both sides. And then just wipe everything off. Here's this again. Armature bar, I'll spray both sides. All right, now the rear spring. All right, and then what else I'll do is so we need to clean the contact screw tip still, and we need to clean the top of the front and rear coil. And then I also clean off the excess oil that was on the uh, the rear deck. So with that, like you could hose your whole machine down if you wanted to. I usually just saturate a corner. And then you it won't evaporate too quick from the rags and then you have time to clean off the areas. Uh, sometimes too before I've taken the coils off as well and cleaned the whole entire machine. It's not a bad thing to do either. Don't have to. But sometimes if you get, you know, build up or whatever on there. And then I'll, I, I run RCA, so I also clean the RCA connection. Um, if you had the traditional clip cord, you could clean those connections too. That's where this stuff comes in nice because you could just spray it in the little contact hole and not necessarily clean it. Um, otherwise, what I used to do too is I would either spray the hole and run a pipe cleaner through or saturate a pipe cleaner and pull it through. And that cleaned up the contact points really nicely as well when using a clip cord. Um, so that's that. All right, so now that we got everything cleaned, we're gonna put a little bit of this Vaseline on the uh, spring and the um, armature bar. So for the armature bar, I'll put it on the top side only. You don't need a whole lot. If you have trouble trying to decipher which was the top and which is the bottom, one side should have this round circle kind of in the metal. And that's caused from where the 
front uh, coil hits on the armature bar. So if you ever get confused, that'll tell you what side you're downside. So slide that into the jig. Grab the front spring. Front spring, we're going to do the top side and the bottom side as well. And remember, you don't need a lot. Like we tell our clients, a little goes a long way. And then for the rear spring, for right now, I'm only going to do the front. I'm not going to worry about the back, and I'm only going to do the top side. Actually, a correction. I'm going to do the top side and the bottom side. All right. Put the rear spring in the jig. Grab the front spring. Grab the screw. Uh, make sure you look when you take everything apart to make sure you know which way the spring's supposed to go back in, the rear one. Um, sometimes you can see that there's a like a lip on it. Sometimes some builders will have the lip down and some builders will have the lip going up. So it can either go like this or they'll have it like this. So make sure you look before you take it apart and it gets um, put back the same direction. Another kind of easy way to tell is if you look at the bottom you'll see there's two marks where the blue is rubbed off that's from the back of the uh, armature bar and that's from the end of the the uh, spring deck all right get that there all right so what's this one filming this in my garage so if you hear all that barking those are the neighbor's dogs so again push it forward snug it and then give it a good twist all right, all right so here we go so line it up I like to start it and then I'll slide this up. So again, you put a little upward pressure on it. When you put it back together, if you don't do that, what can happen is as soon as you start, start tightening the back screw, your whole armature bar assembly is going to come up and it could slip up out of your tool. And then as you crank it, it'll end up going like this. Here, I'll just show you. It'll come up and then just end up like that. So that's why I always try to put a little upward pressure on it. Perfect. And then right now we can, you know, double check our alignment. You're still going to have some play because it's not tight, tight. So we'll snug it so it's got a little tension to it. And then we'll double check it. Everything looks good. Again, snug it and give it a little more. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the contact tip a little bit. I still have a little Vaseline residue on my finger, so I just want to make sure. Perfect. All right, we'll grab our power supply. There we go. Sometimes too, it'll it'll trip you out if you don't need to kill this tight. But if you have it loose, it's gonna cause rattling and it's gonna not it's gonna mess up with the sound of it. 
So I just keep very gentle, just enough to hold it. And now we're, we're back to business. Yeah, and that's that. And that's that. So I, I I like to do this once a month. My coworker we used to use coils. They would do it every week. Um, so it's kind of just up to you what you, what you you know find best. Is there a, is there a diminishing return? Like hey, I'm taking these apart every week, but I'm not noticing you know any any benefit to doing it that much. You just gotta play with it, see what works for you. You know, it's all gonna come down to, you know, how many different machines do you have in your drawer? How often are you using them? You know, this one I don't use a lot, so do I need to do it every month? Maybe not, but, um, you know, the more you take care of them, the more you maintain them, the longer they're gonna last for you. And the less you're gonna have to try to respring them or send them back to a builder to get them redone. So, um, just preventative maintenance is all it is. So. But yeah, that's that. If you have any questions, uh, leave it down below. But otherwise, hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you on the next one.